the course starts in 1970. That's an exceptional year because that's the beginning of the environmental revolution. ELI, ALI collaboration and this course were another one of the things that David Sive was instrumental in getting going uh, in the early days of the environmental movement. I mean, he, of course, was sort of the first environmental lawyer even before there was much environmental law. And he was the founder of this course and he put it together to combine the efforts of the best possible minds that could be brought into uh, uh, Washington to talk about where the law had been, where it was going, and, um, uh, and how it could be implemented. And in the early period, they were opposed and criticized by some other groups, including civil rights groups, who looked upon environmentalism as a cause for the wealthy. Back in 1975, no, to my knowledge, very few, if any, bar associations, state bar associations, had an environmental law section. When we talk about uh, what this first, the first years of this course what were all about, we know. The inception of the uh, American Law Institute's environmental law programs coincided with the passage of major environmental statutes. Not only was it there at the beginning, it was part of the revolution. And the ALI has grown along with the development of those statutes. It was about this revolutionary new federalism type of environmental law. As environmental law became more than just a provincial practice, a practice that began to impact climate change, uh, economic development, and the political structures of the United States. This course brought together lawyers from different walks of life, different areas uh, 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 of their profession, all concentrating on this new emerging law. And what they did was to coalesce and work together to produce the body of law that now is perhaps more complex than any other body of law. The environmental law course is what pulls people together on an annual basis. The fact that we do this every single year for 50 years is unprecedented. I think I first learned about the course when I was a, uh, an ELI board member and working for United Technologies. We were offered a, a complimentary pass for one of our staffers since we were a, a member and, and I was a board member. And that was my first contact. So when I think of this conference, it was very important to me personally and to my firm. This was the conference. And originally we came as attendees to the conference not as speakers. The level of speakers was really incredible. The content was incredible and it was always our goal that we would have an opportunity someday when our firm established themselves that maybe one of us would have an opportunity to actually be a speaker at this conference. I first came to know the conference through Pam Esterman and Kathy Robb and was fortunate to be asked to help teach the unit on the Clean Water Act. I uh, first was invited to speak for the American Law Institute 27 years ago at the Advanced Environmental Litigation course. And it has been one of the most important events that I've ever undertaken outside of my legal practice. I, I think I have a recollection of uh, speaking at this event for the first time around 1987. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw me as an attendee uh, as early as 1983 or something like that. So I uh, knew of the uh, of course because it was well known for uh, uh, many years, but I spoke first in 1991. I was the chief of the environmental enforcement section at the Department of Justice and I spoke about uh, some of the environmental initiatives that we had in place then. It is, there's no question, it really is the premier environmental law conference and has been for many, many years. Uh, and that's uh, validated by the, uh, the quality of the, of the faculty, and I'm not necessarily talking about myself, but uh, among many of the other people who are on, on the faculty uh, year in, year out. What we're able to do with this course is we're able to check in to see how well the uh, work that we're doing is, is meeting the objectives that we need. The 
trajectory of environmental law has gone from uh, not much uh, uh, to something that is internationally recognized, internationally acclaimed. Uh, we have United Nations uh, uh, whole programs and, and, and whole bureaucracy created to advance uh, uh, environmental law. I am inspired by the other speakers and by the attendees. Sometimes I look out in the audience and I see people who frankly are experts themselves in environmental law and could be teaching the class themselves. But they're in the audience because they want to learn. And I think it shows we're all committed to continuous learning. We try to reflect what's happening in the field of environmental law. So we have core panels of air, water, NEPA, but we add to that whatever the new trends are. It's this course uh, taught by practicing lawyers with a fair sprinkling of uh, environmental academics that pulls together the various strands of, the, of environmental law and enriches the, that body that we are all working with. So here's to you, ALI. This conference will continue to be a key resource for all of us and just one wonderful networking opportunity. It's really an amazing uh, conference and I want to say that uh, congratulations. It's really rare in this time when you have something that's an institution like this that lasts and is so vibrant after 50 years. I, I'm pleased at the opportunity I've had this uh, chance to uh, say congratulations to the Environmental Law Conference and uh, here's to another 50 years.